This lesson is on polynomial inequalities and rational inequalities. Uh, given a polynomial function, a polynomial equality has this general form where f at x is greater than 0, greater than or equal, not equal, less than, or less than or equal. So those are all signs that are not equal to. So those are the other types of symbols that could happen, where one is bigger, one is smaller, one is not equal to something. All right, the inequality where a function's greater than zero is true when f at x is positive or when the graph is above the x-axis. The inequality f at x is less than zero is true when f at x is negative. And this would, of course, mean that it's below the x-axis. So name all the intervals uh, for which this function above is that scrap below. Name all the intervals where it's above. So greater than or equal to zero means above. So first of all, the function starts above to the left. So from negative infinity to what x value is it above? And then we're going to do a little u sign. And then when else is it above? That would be from negative 1 to 0. And then when else is it above? The last part is above, right? So that's from 1 to infinity. Uh, when is it below, less than or equal to 0? So you can see where are the intervals. And we're looking for the x value where it starts and the x value where it ends in terms of being below. So those would be the other intervals, from negative 3 to negative 1 and from 0 to 1. So it's below and the other part is below. So here are some steps we're going to use to do it algebraically. We want to have 0 on one side. We want to factor it. Find the zeros and put them on a number line and then test the intervals to see if they're positive or negative. So like number one, we already have zero. So the next step is to factor. So the two numbers that factor this are positive six and negative one. And then what I would do is I would put like a line to create the intervals. So we have negative six and we have positive one. So here's negative six. Draw a line that creates the interval. There it is and positive one, draw a line. And then you can obviously see there are three intervals, left, middle, and right. Now pick a number, any number to the left, and it goes on forever, so you could pick negative a billion. It doesn't really matter. Pick any number in that interval. So if you pick a number like negative 100, maybe it'll be obvious that it's a negative times a negative. And a negative times a negative is positive. There it is. So any number you pick smaller than negative 6 will always give you a positive answer, which is what I want. Pick any number in this interval, and if 0 is in the interval, I love picking 0. So that's a positive, and then 0 take away 1, that's a negative. So if you multiply that together, any number you pick in this interval will give you a negative answer. We don't want that interval. And then any number larger than 1, whatever. Pick something, so positive 1 larger than one so i pick one two so pick pick and notice i just want to know if it's positive or negative so two plus six two take away one and a positive times a positive so these are the intervals that give me the answer greater than zero means a positive answer so where is this positive and from negative infinity to negative six and from one to infinity that's it so that's the work we're doing today, to find the intervals where it's true for. So we're not looking for one answer, we're looking for an interval answer. All right, number two, I want to be able to see it's zero on one side, so I have to be able to factor it. So that's negative 30 and negative one. Find the numbers. Next, factor out the common factor. and then completely factor it. So there's step one. Next, find the zeros. So I have positive three and negative five over two, or negative 2.5. So find positive three, uh, find negative 2.5. And now you have your intervals, left, middle, and right. So pick any number to the left, you know, like negative four, negative 100, 
and I get a negative answer times a negative answer. So that gives me a positive answer. Pick any number in the middle interval. So again, I'm going to pick 0. So if I put in 0, take away 3. If I go 0 plus 5, so a negative times a positive is negative. Pick any number bigger than 3, whichever number you want to pick. And it's a positive times a positive. Now, where is it less than z uh, 0? I'm looking for the negative answer. So there's only one interval that's negative. And it starts at negative 2.5 or negative 5 over 2, and it goes to 3. Now, notice I use parentheses because at negative 5 over 2 and at 3, the answer is 0. So it's not less than 0 here. So we don't use brackets. So you have to think just a little bit if I'm using parentheses or brackets here. Number 3. So first thing I look at is 0. So I'm going to factor this. So it is a trinomial and a simple one. So the two numbers are negative 25 and negative 1. We can keep going. They are a difference of squares. And then what are all the zeros? So once you have it completely factored out, it creates a lot of intervals. So we got negative, sorry, that's positive 5 and negative 5. All right, so we have negative 5 in the interval. We have negative 1 in the interval. We have positive 5 and positive 1. So I'm going to put them all in the interval. And you can see, make them as long as you want. So you can actually see the intervals between the bars. So pick any number to the left. So I'll pick negative 8. Pick any number you want that's smaller than negative 5. So, and I'm just going to put in the signs. So a negative, so negative 8 plus 5, negative 8 take away 5, negative 8 plus 1, negative 8 subtract 1. So that's all kinds of negatives. But if I multiply four negatives together, it actually gives me a positive answer. I'm actually looking for that answer that's positive and equal to. So I'm going to use brackets. So from negative 5 to uh, negative 1, pick any number. So if I pick negative 4, I get a positive and then negative, negative, negative. So just follow the flow of it. That's going to give me a negative answer. I don't want that interval. Pick a number in this interval. You know I like to pick 0. So if you pick 0, you get a positive, uh, a negative, a positive, a negative. All of this together gives you a positive answer. So that's a good interval. Pick any number in this interval. So if I pick 2, that gives me a positive, a negative, a positive, and another positive. But yet, if I put this together, if you multiply it together, you get a negative answer. And then any number bigger than 6 or 5, all the factors will be positive. Positive, 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 positive. So that takes the least amount of thinking. So the answer is going to be positive. So then think, what are the intervals that you're looking for? So greater than or equal to 0 gives you a positive answer. So negative infinity to negative 5. And it's a bracket here. Infinity will never have a bracket. The next one goes from negative 1 to positive 1. And the last one goes to 5 to infinity. And those are all the intervals where this function is uh, greater than or equal to 0. Number 4. So first thing I look, like, look at, it is 0 on the other side. So then I'm going to factor it. So I'm going to factor by grouping. So the first two terms, you have 4x squared and then negative 1. So I have x minus 7. I have 4x squared subtract 1. Well, 4x squared subtract 1 is a difference of squares. So I'm just going to complete the factoring from 4x squared subtract 1. Now it's completely factored. So now I see positive 7 and then a negative and positive a half. So I create my intervals, pick a number smaller. So if I pick negative 2, I get a negative times a negative times a negative. And that's what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for it when it's less than or equal to 0. Pick a, a number in the next interval. 0 is looking at me. That's a negative, a positive, and a negative. That actually gives me a positive answer, so I don't want that one. The next interval, pick a number like 2. 
and that's a negative, a positive, and a positive. This will give me a negative answer, so I do want that interval. Any number bigger than 7, so that would be like 8. Sorry, this should be a minus sign here. That'd be a positive, positive, positive. So everything is positive. So I don't want that interval. So the two intervals I want less than or equal to zero, it's negative and negative. Goes from negative infinity to negative uh, a half. And then positive a half to seven. And it's less than or equal to. So I need brackets around the half and the seven. Perfect. On to number five. This is not zero on the other side. So I'm going to do that first. Subtract 4x. It only arrow only changes direction when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So we're good. Factor out an x. That's negative 12 and negative 11. So I have 3x squared minus 12x plus 1x minus 4. So we're almost done factoring it. So factor out a 3x. Factor out a 1. So here it is factored out. 3x plus 1, x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. All right, so it took a little work. So now x gives me 0. This gives me negative one-third, really tiny interval. That gives me positive four. So pick a, a number on the left, and then just follow the sign. So any, like negative six, and then follow it. So a negative times a negative times a negative is negative. I want it less than a zero, so that's a good interval. Pick a number between one-third and zero, or negative one-third and zero. So a number like that would be negative a quarter, negative one-fifth. So if I do that, that's a negative times a positive. Three times negative a quarter is negative three-quarters plus one, so that's a positive. So a negative times a positive times a negative, that gives me a positive answer. I don't want the positive answer, so that little interval I don't want. Pick a number between zero and four, like two. 2 would give me a positive times a positive times a negative. I want that interval. And then the last one would be all positive. So if I pick a number like 5, every factor would be positive, and I don't want that. So that now I go and go, okay, which are the intervals I want from negative infinity to negative a half, and from 1 half to 6, 4, 5, 4, 4. And all parentheses because there's no uh, line underneath the arrow. It's just uh, less than zero. No, oh, sorry. So it's negative a half. It's, what am I saying? It's negative one third. It was this one, negative one over three. And then it was zero to four. There we go. All right, number six. It needs to be a zero on the right side. So I'm going to do that. X to the fourth. I'm going to add four X cubed. I'm going to subtract 10, so 1 subtract 10 is negative 9, and we have negative 3x, and that's greater than or equal to 0. So I combine like terms. Factor, so I can factor out an x to begin with. Keep factoring, so factor by grouping, so factor out an x squared. So I have x squared, or x plus 4, and then x squared subtract 9 is a difference of squares. So take the square root of each, that's x plus 3, x subtract 3. Now it's completely factored, and you can create your intervals. So at x is 0, that's negative 4, that's negative 3, and that's positive 3. So find those zeros on your number line to create the intervals. So now pick a number. Um, in each interval. So I'm going to pick negative 6, 
and then think of the signs. So it's a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. So just follow it through. That is definitely a positive answer. That is what I'm looking for. So that's a good answer. Pick a number between negative 4 and negative 3. So like negative 3.5. So negative 3.5 is a negative times a positive, and then a negative and a negative. So that gives me a negative answer. I don't want that interval. Pick another number in the next interval, like negative 2. A negative times a negative. Say that again. It's a negative times a positive. A positive times a negative. That gives me a positive answer. So I like that interval. Uh, a number between 0 and 3, like 2. Positive, 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 negative. So that gives me a negative answer. And then if they're all positive, so if I pick the huge number, that would make each factor positive. So if you multiply it through, you get a positive answer. Now think again, which one do I want? Greater than or equal to zero. So I want positives. Equal to part, I gotta be careful with brackets. So I got negative infinity all the way up to a negative four bracket. The next interval starts at negative 3, and it goes to 1, brackets. And the last interval starts at 3, and it goes to infinity. So any, and that's a bracket, so, or parentheses at the end. Any number you pick in these intervals will satisfy this inequality. Number 7. Uh, number 7 is not factorable, so because it's not factorable, I need to create a list. But the thing with this list, this is the rational zero theorem, that when I do synthetic division to 1, negative 9, 24, and negative 16, this adds up to 0. Positive 1 works. So positive 1 works. I don't even need a list. Positive 1 works. It works. It adds up to 0, so 1 works. And then I have... Um, Positive 1 is x minus 1. What's left over is x squared minus 8x plus 16. So if I factor that, what two numbers multiply to 16 um, and add to negative 8? That's negative 4 and negative 4. So negative 4 squared. And that's greater than 0. So that's what I'm looking at. Two positive numbers, positive 1 and positive 4, create my intervals. So now that I have my intervals, pick a number. So I'm going to pick 0 in the left interval. So that's a negative times a positive. I don't want that interval. So pick a number between 1 and 4, like 2. So if I pick 2 take away 1, it's a positive times. Anytime you square it, this will always be positive. So a positive times a positive. And then the last interval, bigger than 4. Everything, 8 take away 1, 8 take away, everything is positive, multiplied together. So where is it greater than 0? So where are the plus signs? So from positive 1 to 4, and then from 4 to infinity. Now, it's important that you just don't say 1 to infinity because 4 is not included in this. So why is 4 not included? Because 4 gives you the answer 0, and it has to be greater than 0. So we go 1 to 4 and 4 to infinity, and we do not include 4 because of that. If there's a line underneath the arrow, then we just go 1 to infinity. 8. Last one. Again, I need to create a list. I'm going to see. Does this add up to 0? So it's 23 and negative 23. So, man, it adds up to 0, so I'm not going to create a list. I know positive 1 works. So even though it's not factorable, positive 1 will reduce it down. So there it is, positive 1. Now what's left over? 2x squared minus 11x, subtract 21. So that's uh, negative 42 and negative 11. That's what negative 14 and 3. So negative 14 and 3. Factor out of 2x. Factor out of 3. And then I have x minus 7, and what's left over is 2x plus 3. All right, so now I have what I need. What did I, what did I miss out? Oh, I missed out on the 1. So there's an x minus 1 in front. 
So we have x minus 1 and these other factors from the positive 1. So we have positive 1 is a 0. We have positive 7, that's a 0. And negative 3 over 2, so negative 1 and a half. There it is. So those are my intervals. I'm looking to see where it's negative. So pick any number smaller than negative uh, 1 and a half, so like negative 6. So a negative times a negative times a negative is negative. That's what I'm looking for. That's a good one. Pick 0 in the next interval. That's a negative times a negative, which is positive, times a positive, which is positive. That's not the interval I want. I want a negative answer. Pick another number in the next interval, like positive 2. So positive 2 will give you a positive times a negative times a positive. That's a negative answer. Good interval. And then pick a number bigger than 7. Everything is positive. So what are the intervals where it's less than or equal to 0? So from negative infinity to negative 3 over 2, bracket. And the next one starts at 1, and it goes to 7. So if you pick any number in these intervals, it would satisfy that inequality. You'd have a negative answer. All right, those are polynomial inequalities. Now we're going to look at rational inequalities. So when we look at rational inequalities, same idea. When the inequality is greater than or zero, it's true when uh, the function is positive or above the x-axis. Same thing here. When the inequality is less than zero, that's when the function is negative or below the x-axis. So they give you a function, but they just graph it here. So when you have a graph, you can look where is it above and above, below. Greater than zero means like where is it above. So if I look here, the x values would be from negative infinity. So from negative infinity to negative three, it's above. It's also above from negative one to two. So from negative one to two, it's above. And then the last interval is four to infinity. It's above. So those are the ones where the graph is above the x-axis. What are the x values where it's below? So here's a part below. That goes from negative 3 to negative 1. And the other part that's below goes from, right here, 2 to 4. And again, taking either the asymptotes or the intercepts, either one. So either an asymptote or an intercept creates the intervals. So when you do this, what's different about this one is that it could either be the zeros or the vertical asymptotes. So now you have to look at the zeros in the numerator and the zeros in the denominator. So both the top and the bottom, and then put them on your thing. Otherwise, it's the same as what we just did. So for number one, we already have zero. I'm looking at the top and the bottom. So the top, the zero is negative five. On the bottom, it's negative two. I'm going to do a little jagged piece here at negative two. And that jagged piece tells me that's, uh, that's an asymptote. So for an asymptote, I'm always going to use parentheses. But if it's an x-intercept, if this had an equal to sign part to it, it would be a bracket. But this would always be a parentheses. And now I test it. So pick a number. So like negative 6, pick. So if you have a negative divided by a negative, you get a positive answer. Here, pick another number in the next interval, like negative 4. That's a negative. That's a positive divided by a negative. Remember, I'm looking for a greater than. So that one's good. That one's bad. Pick the, another number, so like 0. That's a positive over a positive. And I'm looking for a greater than 0. So I'm looking for the intervals that give you a positive answer. So there's two of them. One goes negative infinity to negative 5. Parentheses because it's just greater than. And the other one goes from uh, negative 2 to infinity. So if you pick an answer in these intervals, you're going to get a positive answer. The only one here in the middle will give you a negative answer. Number two. For this one, we're going to factor first. So that's going to be negative 6 and positive 1. And then when I factor, I can find all the zeros. So the top, if x is just by itself, then 0 is a 0. This is positive 6, and this is negative 1. And then I test. So I start on the left, pick any number on the left, Okay, that's a negative. Here on the bottom, a negative times a negative is positive, and then when you put it all together, you get a negative answer. So that's a good interval. Pick a number in the next interval. So between negative 1 and 0, that would be like negative a half. 
So if you pick negative a half, you get a negative on top. That's a negative, but then a positive. So the negatives divide out and get a positive answer. I don't want that interval. I only want the negative interval. Pick another number. So like the another one here, I'll do it over here, uh, like positive one. So if you pick positive one, here the positives divide out and you're left with a negative answer. That's what I want. And then pick a number bigger. So I picked eight. So everything is positive. So I don't want that one. So I just want the negative answers because it's less than zero. So the final answer would be from negative infinity uh, to negative one. And then the next interval would be from zero to six. So any number you pick in these intervals would give you a negative answer. And that's what I was looking for. Next page. All right, number three. Step one is to factor. So that's the difference of squares. Next is to understand the zeros. So in the numerator, the zeros are negative three and positive three and then negative four. So that creates my interval. So pick a number on the left interval. That gives me a negative times a negative over a negative. So altogether, that gives me a negative answer, which is what I don't want. Next. Pick a number between negative 4 and negative 3. So that would be like negative 3.5. So if that's true, you'd have a, a negative times a negative, which is positive, over a positive. So that gives you a positive answer. I want that. Pick a number in the next interval. I like 0, so I'm going to pick 0 in the next interval. That's a positive times a negative over a positive. So all together, that gives you a negative answer. We don't want that one. Pick a number bigger than 3, 4, 5, whatever. Pick a number here in this interval. So that's all positive. So I want to know when it's greater than or equal to 0. And beware where the asymptote is. So the asymptote's at negative 4. So I need to be aware of that. Because for an asymptote, you're going to have parentheses always. So negative 4, and it goes to 3 or negative three, that's a bracket because of the equal sign part. The next interval starts at three and it goes to infinity. So whether it's infinity or an asymptote, you always use parentheses. Otherwise, you'd have to think whether you use a bracket or parentheses. Number four, step one is to factor this. So that's positive three and positive seven. The next step is the zero. So we have positive six, uh, negative three, negative seven. So there they are. Be aware that negative seven and negative three are asymptotes. So they are always going to be parentheses. So I'm going to start and put in negative eight. Think about it. That's a negative, a negative, and a negative. So all together, that gives you a negative answer. And that's what I want. So that's a good one. So negative six. If I put it in, negative, negative 6, that's a positive and a negative. So the negatives divide out and give you a positive answer. I'm going to pick 0 in the next interval. So that's a negative, a positive, and a positive. So altogether, that gives you a negative answer. And then pick a number bigger than 6. And that gives me a positive answer everywhere. So what I'm looking for is less than or equal to zero. So the positive answers I'm not looking for. So the negative answer goes negative infinity to negative seven, parentheses. And then it goes from negative three to uh, six. And the only bracket there would be at six. So negative infinity, the vertical asymptote, the other asymptote, only six would have a bracket even with the equal sign underneath. Number five, we're going to factor it. After we factor it, we're going to find the zeros. So positive four, uh, positive one, zero is an asymptote, and negative two is an asymptote. Tons of intervals. So pick a number like negative eight. So it's a negative times a negative. Here's a negative times a negative. So that's going to give you a positive answer. So any number you pick in that interval will end up being positive. 
We don't want a positive answer, so we don't want that interval. Pick a number in this interval. So I'm going to pick the number uh, negative 1. Negative 1 is still a negative times a negative and a negative times a positive. So if I put this together, I get a negative answer in that interval, and I want that negative answer. Next one is a really small interval from 0 to 1, so I'm going to pick a half. So if I plug in a half, I get a negative times a negative, and I get a positive times a positive, so I get a positive answer. Again, I want a negative answer. Plug in 2, and I get a negative times a positive. Plug in 2, and I get a positive times a positive. So altogether, a negative divided by a positive, I get a negative answer. If I plug in a number bigger than 4, I get a positive, positive everywhere. So everything is positive. So then, once I look off that number line, I go, okay, remember, I want less than or equal to 0. I want the negative answer. So one interval that's negative goes from negative 2 uh, to negative 2 to 0. Both parentheses. And the next one, oh no, it goes from negative 2, yeah, to 0. And the next one goes from 1 to 4 is the other one. Now 1 is a bracket, and then 4 is parentheses. All right, no, 4 is also a bracket. So 1 and 4 are in the numerator. They're x-intercepts, so they can be brackets compared to the asymptotes. Number 6, step 1 is to factor this. Eight. There it is. So then I have negative seven. I got a negative, oh, I got negative eight. I got two and five. So find the zeros at the top and bottom. Make your intervals. So this one needs to be uh, longer to the left. So that I'm going to pick like negative nine or a smaller a number smaller than negative 8. So that's a negative times a negative and a negative times a negative. So altogether, it's going to give me a positive answer, which I want. The next interval between negative 8 and negative 7, if you pick negative 7.5, you get uh, a negative times a negative, and you get a positive times a negative. So altogether, that would give you a negative answer. I'm not even going to put it on there. I don't want that interval. The next one goes from negative 7 to 2. I'm going to pick 0. So 0 gives me a positive answer. I want that. Pick a number in the next interval, like 3. That's a positive times a positive, and a positive times a negative. So altogether, that gives me a negative answer. I don't want it, so I'm not going to write it in there. Pick a number bigger than, um, what number is that? 5, so like 6 and everything is positive. So if you pick positive 6 in, it makes every factor positive, which makes the whole answer positive. And then I'm looking for greater than 0. So it goes from negative infinity to negative 8. The next interval goes from negative 7 to 2. And the last interval goes from 5 to infinity. So there is three intervals where that rational is greater than zero. So we're looking for the intervals where it's positive. All right, two left. Here, for number seven, we need zero on the other side. So I need to subtract one. I'm going to factor the denominator and then recognize I need to multiply top and bottom by that. So if I put that together as one fraction, you'd have x subtract 2x, which is negative x, and you'd have negative 7. Now, a negative times a negative makes that plus 2. So negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. So it would be negative x uh, subtract 5. 
and now we're ready to go. So now I have that zero on the other side. So for this one, it would actually be negative five would make it. So if you add five and divide by negative one, negative five, and then positive one. So that creates my intervals here. So I got three intervals. Pick like, I'll pick like negative eight. So negative times a negative makes that positive. And here, when I subtract and multiply, it'll be a negative. So a positive divided by a negative, I don't even want that. I just want the positive answer. So if I plug in zero, you get a negative divided by negative. So I want that one. So that interval works. And then if I plug in any number bigger than one, so like two, I get a negative divided by a positive, which is a negative answer. I don't want that interval. I just want the positive interval. So the only answer is the interval from negative five to one. And that's it with parentheses. All right, last one here for the lesson. So again, the step is first, it needs to have a zero. So I am going to subtract first and then I need to have the skill with common denominators. So I'm going to use the other denominator, top and bottom. So see how I use the other denominator to create common denominators? So if I put this together, I get a 9 take away 8. That's 1x. Negative 27 plus 32 is 5, so it's x plus 5. And then we have the common denominator. Now, once I put this together, now we have negative 5. We have positive 4 and positive 3. So then I have my intervals I'm creating. So pick a number in this interval and then think. So plug negative 8 in. I get negatives all around, but that's going to give me a negative answer. And that's what I want. Plug in zero into here, and you get a negative times a negative divided by a positive. So that gives you a positive answer. I don't want that. Plug in, uh, what is this, 3.5. So if you plug in 3.5, you get a positive answer. You get a negative answer and a positive answer. So divide the positive answers out and you're left with a negative. That's what I'm looking for. And if I plug any number bigger than four in, every factor is gonna be positive and give me a positive answer. But I'm just looking for the negative answers, less than or equal to zero. I need to be aware that these uh, here on the right are asymptotes. So from negative infinity to uh, negative five, that's gonna be a bracket because of the equal sign underneath. And then the other interval with negative is three to four, but they're um, asymptotes, so they're always parentheses. And that's it. So there is your lesson and practice on solving polynomial and rational inequalities. Mr. G Math, over and out. Until next time, I'm proud of you.